Praise the Lord. I feel like I've been in church already, but I want to go further. Amen? Amen. Talking to you tonight about Christ and the church. Uh, we have ministered on uh, Abraham and Sarah. We've talked about David and Bathsheba. Uh, we've talked about Mary and Joseph. And now I want to minister to you about Christ and the church or the bride and the bridegroom, however you want to define that. There is a relationship between Christ and the church that is uh, described in terms that we can understand as we look to the human couple. When you think of the groom or a groom, you think of a young man that's in love with his beloved. He loves her, and she is his heart's desire, and uh, she is the center of his every thought. Now, he would give his life for her. That's a picture of Christ, isn't it? We also see the bride, uh, a young lady. Uh, they're looking to her groom, and she loves that groom, and she dresses to please him. She thinks uh, of him before she thinks of herself. She is the apple of his eye. Now, I think that we can we have a pretty good understanding of young couples when they're young and in love and getting ready for the wedding day. Do we understand clearly, though, the, uh, the thought of Christ in the church? Now, let's look to the Bible and see the message of God and what the wedding ceremony really means and the meaning behind it. See, Christ's first miracle was at a wedding there in Canaan of Galilee, Right? John chapter 2 verse 1, John chapter 2 verse 1 verse 1 says on the third day, everybody say third day. Third day. Important things happen on the third day, don't they? Amen. On the third day there was a wedding in Canaan the Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. She also was invited to the wedding with the disciples. And the wine ran out. The mother of Jesus said to, to him, have they no wine? And Jesus said to her, woman, what do I have to do with, uh, do with me? What do you have to do with me? For my hour is not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you to do. Well, I just caught uh, this camp right there. Refreshing. See, sometimes we live in such a fast-paced society that we actually forget what the message and tongue was about. Here we have an occasion where the Spirit of God has spoken to us tonight. I will tell you what to do. I will tell you where to go. I will tell you. And here's Mary teaching us a lesson. Jesus is in the house. Amen. Yeah, amen. Jesus has showed up to the party. Yes. Jesus, the, the true groom, bridegroom, has just showed up. And man, he's ready to, to do what he needs to do. But she's instructing, listen, do whatever he tells you to do. Friend, if you want miracles in your life, if you want God to show up in your home or at your church or anywhere else, in any area of your life, do what He tells you to do. Be obedient unto Him. Amen? Now there was six stone water jars uh, there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty to, about 23 gallons. Verse uh, 7, Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. And He said to them, now draw uh, some out and take it to the, the master of the feast. So they took it out. Verse 9, when the master of the feast tasted the water, now becoming wine, and uh, did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn it knew, the master of the feast called it called the bridegroom, and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, uh, the poor wine is served later. But you have kept the good until now. This is the first of his signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifest his glory. I said manifest his glory. Yeah. Do you hear me tonight, church? Yeah. Manifest his glory. And his disciples believed in him. Friend Mary saying, hey, whatever he tells you to do, do it. That's right. The disciples came. They came with expectation knowing that he was the master, but yet they went away believing and trusting in him. For He's the one able to do miracles. He's the one able to do wonders. He's the one that's able. Friend, I want to tell you tonight, He's the one that's able. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you, friend, we get so caught up in stuff. This story is less about wine and more about the marriage. Amen. We get so hung up sometimes on, on life about this and that. But I want to tell you, look at the, 
this number, the third day. It was a wedding day. Amen? Jesus rose again on the third day. Amen? He did that with reason. He did that with purpose. He's the resurrection and the life. He's the life giver. He's not the death giver. He's the life giver. Amen? He rose in the third day. And friend, I think things are going to start rising again this year. Hallelujah. I believe some things are going to come alive like they've never come alive before. I'm believing that. Amen? God's going to do some great things. They had six vessels. That's a picture of creation. They were 23 gallons. which is a picture of a 24-hour day minus one. Friend, I want to tell you uh, why it's minus one, why it's 23 is because there is 24 hours. But there's an hour that's coming that we haven't seen yet. It's the midnight cry. It's when Jesus is coming back for the church. It's when the bridegroom is coming for the bride. John came to him, Jesus saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples don't fast? Verse 15, And Jesus said to them, Can the sons of the bride, bride's chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then they shall fast. Yeah. Friend, we've been fasting and praying and believing God. The reason why you and I fast today is because Although the Holy Spirit is here, Jesus said, I must go that another might come. The Holy Ghost, the paraclete, the one that walks beside. Friend, we got the one that walks beside, the one that empowers us, the one that comes on us, and we need Him. See, I believe in God directing our steps. You're not here by accident. You're here by the purposes of God. It's called divine providence. You need to hear what the Spirit of God is saying because God is saying something. Now here Jesus is speaking about the, the bride chamber and the bridegroom. Christ, while on earth, was uh, was with the church, uh, His bride. Therefore, they need to need sacrifice. But we're living in a time, friend, where we need to do some sacrificing. Yeah. Where we need to spend some time with the Lord. Amen? Where we need to saturate some things in, yeah. in prayer and yeah. the Spirit of God. Where we need to feel like we've been to a baptism every service, although not in water, but yet in the presence of Jehovah. Yeah. In the presence of the Holy Ghost. Friend, when you feel like you've been done with God, Amen. 
When I got married, the shade pulled a fast one on me. <laughs> she had a special song that she said, I'm going to ask her to sing it right now. <laughs> Only God can love you more than I do. And it touched my heart. It's one of those songs that we sing when we're alone and uh, quiet time. And after that, I gave her a high five, so that reminded me of that. But I want to tell you, that's, that song has some truth and it bears in right here. Only God can love you more, friend. Amen? God is doing something. In a world that's speaking death, God is still speaking life. And we're not going to roll over and play dead. But come up with a shout. Amen? Shout of the Lord. The voice of triumph. Amen? They had to do some fasting. Uh, they didn't have to do any fasting because Jesus was there. But friend, you and I are having to pray some things. And so the Bible says that only this comes out by prayer and fasting. There are some things that we just need to do some business with God about. Amen? Well, I thought the fast was over. Friend, the, the fast is never over. If God has called you to do something, do something. If he's called you, if you feel like you need to grow closer to God, I want to uh, uh, admonish you to maybe fast and pray. Spend some time with God. But but I don't have to do that. Friend, don't you need to do that? Yes, amen. amen. You don't have to go to McDonald's after the service, but don't you want to? Some of you do. Amen. Matthew chapter 22, verse 1. And again, Jesus spoke them in the parable saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to the king who gave a wedding feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited. Everybody say invited. Invited, invited to the wedding feast. But they would not come or go. Verse 4. Again, he sent other servants saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen, my fatted calves, and have, have, uh, that have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Everybody say ready. ready. Come to the wedding feast. I want to tell you, God has already prepared things for this church, for other churches. God is preparing things. There's already a table spread. He said in His Word, I have prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Amen. In that same Scripture, He said, I'm going to lead you into green pastures besides still waters. Amen. We're going to be a tree of righteousness planted beside the rivers of God. Hallelujah. Friend, I want to tell you, there's a lot of things that can be moved in this world, but the church is not going to be moved. Friend, as long as we stay on the Bible, as long as we stay in the Word, as long as we stay in fellowship with God, friend, the heaven and earth can move, but His Word Friend, believe it. Claim it. Trust it. Amen? The king was very angry. Verse 7. And he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned them, burned their city. Verse 8. Then he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready. But those invited, everybody say invited, Bye. were not worthy. Verse 9. Go therefore to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out to the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with the guests. But when the king came uh, in and looked at the guests, he saw there a man that was not in, was, had not no wedding garment on. Okay, verse 12, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Verse 13, and then the king said to the, the attendants, Bind him foot, hand and foot, cast him into outer darkness. That's a, a picture of hell, friend. In that place there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Verse 14, so many are called, but few are chosen. Another way of thinking about it, all are, all are called, but few will go. It's really the, the original Greek language there. All are called, but few will go. Friend, we need to be going. And we need to be telling people about Jesus. Amen. Is it that hard? I can't do it. I'm, I'm shy, friend. If God directs your steps and you trust Him to direct your steps, then you've got to trust Him for the words that He's going to put in your mouth to talk to them about. Amen. Amen? Furthermore, to help you in this, we live in a world where people constantly talk about themselves and complain. Amen. Yeah. Isn't it true? Jesus is at a wedding that came into Galilee. They started running out of wine. 
people started complaining. Yeah. And what did Jesus do? He did a miracle. Amen. Amen. He solved their problems. Friend, Jesus is the answer to the yes. problem. Amen. Every church situation is found in Jesus Christ. Every life situation is found in Jesus Christ. Every problem we have has to do with souls. Amen. The more souls that we have in the church, when we're going after souls, it's going to solve our problem. Brother Asher, is that true? Friend, yes, it is true. I just read it to you. He invited people. He had everything prepared. But the people that He invited didn't come. He said, go out and bring them in. Go out and bring them in. Now listen. Wedding crashers are not a good thing, right? When they are found without uh, their garment on, they're thrown out. The key to the story is the dress. Dress like you're meeting the king. Act like you're meeting the king of kings. Amen. Amen. Take what you have and give it to the Lord. Come. Come with your heart fixed upon the wedding. Hey, I'm invited. Well, I didn't know he knew me. I was just out. Boy, that, that, that guy who just passes me over, I didn't know he knew me. Can you imagine the guests that they were invited? He said, go out with the road. Yeah. They didn't have everything, but yet, yet when they were invited, some of them, boy, they came in. I know how to dress for a wedding. Amen. But there's some people that may not know how to dress coming to church. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. We want them in what? Yes. Yeah. Amen. Let them come. Amen. God will clothe them in His righteousness. Yeah. Amen. God will wash them up. Amen. God will remove every stain right. of sin. That's Amen. God will do the work in their lives. That's what I want. Amen. That's what God wants. He wants people to come in and let Him do the work Amen. in their hearts and their lives. Now, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 24 says this, Now the church submits to Christ. So also wives should submit to husbands and everything uh, to, to their husbands. Verse 25, Husbands, love your wives. Men, look to your wife and say hello. I love you. Amen. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave Himself to her. To her. To her. The problem we have today is we're so self-centered we never give ourselves to anybody. It's about our schedule. It's about our clock. It's about our calendar. It's about our agenda. And we never make it about God. We never make it about others. We don't stop and talk to somebody. Amen? It's going to take something to reach them all of them because, believe it or not, I'm living here a little bit. Yeah. And it's interesting to me that I talk to people and I say hi and they walk right past me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll go up and talk to them and they'll say, do I know you? Yeah. Do I have to know you to talk to you? No. I wonder this sometimes. Yeah. See, there's something we have to break through, yeah. friend. Right. In order to reach this town and this community, we're going to have to break through some things. Right. Jesus had to do some breaking through. Hey Amen. He had to go to some places and deal with some people. Right. Remember one time he was ministering they wanted to take him out and stone him. Right. Of course he walked right through them. Yeah. Amen. There's nothing that we can't walk through when we walk with Jesus. Amen. When we walk with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Husbands, love your wives as Christ the groom loved the church, the bridegroom. And gave himself to her. That he might satisfy her, sanctify her, having cleansed her from the washing of water and the word. See, the word's always important, friend. I said the word's always important, friend. So that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy without blemish. Tell you what, God's come for a church just like that. Therefore, he has to come for believers just like that. In the same way, husbands love their wives as their own bodies. So, who loves his wife loves himself. Verse 29, For no one ever hates his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church. Because we are the members of his body. That's one body. Verse 31, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast, meaning cleave, meaning become one, to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Now, the mystery is profound, it says there in verse 32. 
And I have, uh, I am saying that this refers to Christ and the church. However, let each of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is imagery of the bride and the bridegroom. Amen? It's a comparison, church. We need some dedication. Amen? You might have thought, this is a shame. what is she trying to say? She's trying to say what the Spirit of God is saying. He said, we need some dedication today. Husbands and wives. See, Jesus is more dedicated than we are, friend. We would have been washed up a long time ago if Jesus had not been walking beside us, walking with us. Amen? Praise God. God can touch you right now if you will let God. I said, God can touch you right now if you let God. I don't think you know what I'm getting at. I said, God can touch you right now if you let God. Will you act your faith on that? I said, will you act your faith on that? Okay, then I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. I said, God can touch you. I'm waiting on you. I'll, I'll be more plain. You need to be prayed for right now. I'm waiting on you.
Hallelujah. 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 Amen. God's doing some things, church. I'm going to go right into the Word now. I'm going to continue on. And uh, everybody can just worship where they're at. It doesn't bother me one bit. Okay? Now, God can can do some uh, better for us than we do for, maybe we do for others. But I want to take you to Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. that says this. Let us rejoice and exalt and give Him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and His bride uh, has made herself ready. Friend, we've got to get ready. I said we've got to get ready. And has granted her the clothing to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. Verse 9, And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of God. Verse 10, Then I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, You must not do that, for I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. Friend, God is fulfilling every prophetic word that He's ever said. And God is going to fulfill His word. God is doing some things. And I want to be a part of what God is doing. Don't fear a move of God. Well, things might change. Hallelujah. Friend, change is a part of life. You're not the person you were in your 20s. You've matured. You've grown in God. You're not the person you were in your 60s. You've gone through things. you face faced life. You're not the person you were in your 70s. Friend, there's changes every day. But the change that God brings, we want. He came and changed a wedding that was running out of wine. He comes to a wedding that had no guests and filled the room with guests. Amen? And He says here in Revelation, friend, we're headed to Revelation. Amen? That's the coming of the Lord. That's, that's Jesus coming back. That's the rapture. Everything written in Revelation, we're headed towards that. Amen? And it says there, blessed are those that are invited. Friend, every service you're invited to come and be a part of the presence of the Lord. Every service you're invited. But it's your choice to come. It's your choice to participate. It's your choice to drink of the water of God. To drink of the presence of God. It's your choice. Amen? I said amen. 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 Hallelujah. All those that come, uh, that are coming to live in the new Jerusalem will be a part of the bride. We must notice that the marriage of the Lamb in heaven uh, is evidence of the church being in heaven prior to the return of Christ on earth. See, God is coming, friend. And He's coming in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Jesus is coming. Is He coming for you? Are you coming for Him? Amen? Amen? Now, Christ is the bridegroom at the marriage. And the church is the bride. And we see this in Revelation. That's a celebration of God and the church. God and the church. Everybody say that with me. God and the church. Amen. So when Jesus says that He hates divorce and explains that it is because of the hardness of heart that divorce takes place, spiritually, a hard-hearted person or a hard heart keeps us out of heaven. There's a spiritual indication there. Friend, I want to make that marriage supper. And I don't want to divorce God on here and on earth. I want to walk with the Lord. I want to talk with Him. I want to renew myself, renew my commitment to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrew weddings consisted of three phases. One, the betrothal. Where when the couple were, was young, they were betrothed to one another. Two, presentation, the festival, the, the lasting several days uh, which preceded the ceremony. And thirdly, the ceremony itself, the exchanging of vows. The church uh, is, was betrothed to Christ by the sovereign choice in eternity's past. See, God made a choice. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but come to 
through repentance have everlasting life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The final supper will signify the end to the ceremony. So when we're in heaven, that, that last supper will, will, will signal the end of the ceremony. This symbolic meal, this meal that's going to take place there in the millennial kingdom, after the millennial kingdom, the last, it will last through a thousand years. The bride, the church, and all those redeemed in the Old Testament will be the bride. Amen? Praise the Lord. Don't you love the Lord? Amen. We're getting ready to go into uh, communion time here in just one moment. And I'll give instructions and we'll go uh, from there. But I wanted to read this to you. <clears throat> this is a ceremony that, one of the ceremonies that I have done when I perform a ceremony, but I wanted to read these words to you. We were gathered at the sight of God in the presence of this company to join together God and His church. The Bible teaches us that marriage is the holy institution established in heaven by the divine wisdom and the kindness of God, who said, It is not good that man should be alone, and I will make him a help, helpmate for him. And who again said, these two shall be one. We'll stop right there. This happens when a man and a woman come and they want to make vows to one another. They want to be married. God has fixed life for you not to walk alone. Some of us may be single in the building today. Some of us may be married. Some of us may be going through situations. But I want to tell you, God has made life that you do not walk alone. You walk with God. Not away from Him, but walk with Him. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, honored and sanctified the wedding in Canaan of Galilee with His presence. And it was here that He wrought the miracle, bringing cheer and joy to the host and the guests. And in thus beautifying the earthly union with the first record, record manifestation of His miracle working power. He saw, uh, he saw in it a symbol of the day to come when He Himself, as the blessed heavenly bridegroom of the church, should lead His own beloved in the mystical bride chosen, uh, drawn by the grace from whom among men, to the great marriage supper of the Lamb that God the Father Himself has ordained and shall be celebrated to the victory of the cross uh, shall be commissioned. In creation and of the man was the first form and the woman, Eve, says, uh, says the scripture that uh, the woman might be from the man, seated forth the humility, and the, the modesty, and the gentleness that should characterize her kind. Yet man, in being made last of all creation, of God's creation, was set forth the best and most excellent of all of God's creatures, their works, his works. So Eve, being made after Adam, and out of him set an honor on, upon the woman as being the glory of man. As ladies, you're the glory of man. So church, we are the glory of God. God has given His life and lives to make intercession for us, lives to love us. We should feel the most honored and loved people on the face of the earth. Our God loves us. Amen. And He vowed His love. Amen. When I have a young couple stand before me, of course you address the men and you address the ladies to the woman, to the church. Wilt thou have this man, God in other words, to be thy wedded husband, to live together after God's holy ordinance in the holy state of matrimony? Because that's what really God's saying, friend. He's doing a vow. Wilt thou love him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, keeping uh, you only unto Him for as long as you both shall live. Isn't that what God is saying to the church? Serve me in sickness and in health, for richer or poor. Don't go after another. Stay with me. I have vowed a vow to you. Vow your vow to me. Amen? Our issues will come at this time. You don't have to be a member of our church to partake of uh, communion.
communion. We only ask that you are a born uh, again believer in Jesus Christ. First of the emblems, gentlemen. I want to read to you some scripture out of First Corinthians chapter eleven. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty three, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks he broke it and said Take heed, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Uh, wherefore, whoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. And let no, but let a man examine himself, and, so that he may <clears throat> eat of the bread and drink of the cup of the Lord. Friend, I truly believe the time is at hand where Jesus is coming soon, and uh, there is a lost world out there which we need to be a part of and reach. Now, I'd like to tell you, the devil's not going to stand by and just let things happen. He would like to seek to hinder every service. He would like to discourage every person in the pew. The Bible does say that in the last days we'll see a falling away. And that grieves me because I'm seeing that. I'm seeing that. Aren't you seeing that? That grieves my heart and I know it grieves the heart of the Lord. But friend... Let's reach out a hand to a friend, to a neighbor, and tell them about Jesus. So I want to tell you, the bridegroom is coming. In the parable that talks about the ten virgins, they were in white, they had their lamps lit, they had oil, they had what they needed. But some of them were more prepared than others. And friend, I want to tell you, there's some Christians that are going to be more prepared than others. The Bible declares in that parable that at the, they were running low on oil and five, the five foolish wanted to take from the five wise and say, give us some of your oil. There, there, there's going to be a time, friend, where there's going to be churches. It's not going to be our church because we're going to make a difference. We're going to make a choice to serve God. But we're going to have the oil. We're going to have the anointing. God's doing a work here. You can see it. You can feel it. I don't have to tell you that. I just got to remind you and focus on that, okay? There will be a time where there will be some churches, hey, we want what you have. We want the anointing. We want we want to experience what you have. Give us some of what you got. Right? All I can say to them is, you better be seeking God now. Friend, don't wait till the rapture takes place and then come to the altar. Amen. Come to the altar now. My mom was right. Dad was right. My brother was right. My sister was right. My neighbor was right. The preacher was right. No, friend. God's just right. And God was speaking to you all alone. Friend, don't we need to make heaven our home? Amen. Every head bowed, every eye clothed. Friend, are you right with the Lord? Do you need to be right with the Lord? If you do, you need to pray and call on God and be saved and live for Him. You know what it's all about. God's calling your name, friend. He is calling your name. Will you turn to Him? Will you hear His voice today? And will you call on the Lord? Say, Brother Mark, I, I will. I want to. But it's been so long. It's been a while. It's, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I have the words. But friend, 
It's simple. Say this with me. Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me. Forgive me of what I've done. Forgive me of what I said. Forgive me of what I thought. Forgive me of every sin I've ever committed. Wash me. Come into my heart. And make me new again. And I will live for you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, if you're done, come back this way. touching the fabric of our hearts and our lives. And I want to say, you're part of that. We're part of that. And the best days are ahead of the church. The most glorious days are ahead of the church. Every church. Amen. Take the, the, the bread. The Lord took the bread. That was a portion of His body. The symbol of His body. He took it and He broke it. I know it's very little, but let's break it. Squeeze it. His body was broken for you. The Bible says that Emmanuel, God with us, He came in the, in the form of a baby, lived as a man, sinless, died on the cross, rose again on the third day. We're made in the image of God, you and I, friend. His body bore stripes. It was torn, it was tattered for you and I. As we take the bread, let's thank God for that. Take the bread. <clears throat> I want you to notice how hard sometimes it is to take something dry in your mouth. Remember, remember what Jesus, where Jesus was. He was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And He was praying. He took His disciples with Him and He said, you stay here, I'm going to go a little farther. He went to pray. He come back to check on them. There they were asleep. He said, can't you pray? Can't you see? Don't you know what hour it is? Jesus went back and prayed. He was praying to the Lord. He was sweating great drops of blood. He said, Lord, let this cup pass from me. And He said, nevertheless, not my will, but Thy will be done. And there's where it rests with you and I, friend. Your will and God's will. Will you submit to God? Will we as a body of Christ submit to the Lord? Communion. Communion with the Lord. And He at that moment looked to the cross with joy and He gladly bore our stripes 
And he gladly took those nails into his body, the crown of thorns on his head, and that spear into his side. Friend, this cup represents the precious blood of Jesus Christ that can redeem you, save you, cleanse you, heal you. Amen? If you need God to do something in your life, something in your body, take one hand and put it over the heart, and I'm going to pray over this cup, and then we're going to drink it. Lord, in Jesus' name, I put my hand over my heart, and I confess that my body needs you. I need my healing. I need my redemption. I need cleansing. I bless this cup. I bless it, Lord, that it will do what it needs to do in the bodies of those by faith, that they will be touched of God, healed of God, redeemed of God. We thank you for the stripes, for by your stripes we are healed. According to your word, now let's just partake of the cup. Hallelujah. Now let's lift our hands to the heaven. Let's give God praise tonight. Lord God, we love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you're our bridegroom and we are the bride. We thank you, Lord, that you're coming soon. God, and we're to be about your business. We're, we're to be about your work. And Lord God, you will guide our step. God, you will steady our hand. And you will increase our faith. And we claim life in the name of Jesus. We believe, Lord Jesus, from this day forward, going forward, dedicated to you completely. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen and amen. Thank you for coming to church tonight. Thank you for being a part of the service. Amen. Sister Michelle is going to say something to you right here quickly. But if you've had fun tonight, then you need to tell somebody about the fun that you had. I thought you had fun. Amen. Amen. I've enjoyed being in God's presence in God's house. And I want to tell you, you go to work on Monday morning, they're going to be talking about what they're talking about. But I've got something to say. Amen. Amen. It's about Jesus. I just wanted to remind everyone, because we have been talking about witnessing tonight and being able to be used by God, we are having our next group, but we invited the whole church to the bulletin. This Saturday at 9 o'clock, we're going to have a special seminar on witnessing evangelism, and none of you are exempt from that type of role, and that would be something that would be helpful to you. Maybe you are not used to talking to others about Christ. It's be a great opportunity for you to get to learn, and then we're going to do some hands-on um, activities with that. So that starts at 9 o'clock Saturday in the fellowship hall, and we'd like to have everyone come that, that can. That can. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you, and we thank you for your power and your presence. God, I know that I have been with you tonight. And I thank you, Lord God, that you saved us, not to just keep it to ourselves, but you saved us to use us in, in, in evangelizing the whole world for you. Lord God, I thank you that you are with each person. I pray, God, a hedge of protection around them as they travel tonight. Lord God, I pray that you would keep them, help them, Father, at their jobs, at schools, wherever they go tomorrow. Lord God, may they shine the light of Christ. May they shine the flame brighter than they ever have before. May others take notice and wonder why, that they might be able to give an account for the joy that they have, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that you would be with each and every family member that they're going home to that are not saved tonight. God, I pray that those people at home would know that they have been with you tonight. I pray, Lord God, that you would help those to see the, the light of Jesus Christ and even get saved tonight when those family members go home, Lord God. I pray for sons, daughters, husbands, wives, grandmas, grandpas, Lord God. I believe, Father, that you would not to perish, but all to come to repentance. And Lord, I thank you for allowing us to be part of that plan. Jesus, I pray that you bless every person. Give them a great week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Shake somebody's hand. Tell somebody you love you. God bless you.